Hey, it's Brooks with Character Design Forge. In this video, we're gonna cover some common pain points that come up in drawing. Things like uh, the difference between uh, gesture drawing and construction drawing and the value of kind of building both at once. Uh, a little bit about values and color picking and just some general appeal in character design things. Now, the artwork in this video is actually supplied by patrons like you could be. If you've been following along for a while, you know that over on patreon.com slash and I offer personalized video critiques of your work, uh, people who are looking to improve their art. And I've always shared some of that on the public side of things, uh, if people are willing to have their videos public. Um, I used to post just the raw footage of me drawing and talking at the same time. That didn't work out too well. Then I started uh, more recently drawing ahead of the video so I could just focus on getting points across. And now, uh, I've actually made those videos for the people, personal, talk to them one-on-one -on -one already, and I'm going to use that same work of theirs uh, to talk to you directly um, so that we can just go through a couple of points that I think are common pain points for artists, and uh, let's start with the difference between construction and gesture drawing. So here we have some work by John, who goes by Anime Freak Online, um, and there's something that I see a lot throughout, not just these specific images here, but throughout his body of work, um, and that is a overemphasis on gestural lines uh, within the characters and an actual lack of construction. Um, so for example, let me just pull up uh, a little draw over that I did here as sort of an, an option. Um, one thing that we always are trying to do is we're trying to breathe life into characters and so we'll try and use these arcing lines and curves and things. Um, but what ends up happening here is if you don't have enough uh, consistent construction, uh, base skeletal masses and things like that in, in say, the head, um, what you end up with is, you know, you're, you're looking to, to create lines and, and uh, arcs throughout a, a face, let's say, like here, and you end up actually curving and, and molding the entire head um, because there isn't any kind of rigid structure to push back on that. And that's what's kind of happening here. The, the head is maybe molding a little bit too much um, the way that it would with clay or something like that. Here's the, the draw over that I have on the side here, which just skews a little bit more into the, the direction of construction, right? So it's, it's a difficult line that we have to breach here, but the head has these consistent um, masses and, and things that make them up that aren't gonna change because they're bone. And even if we're trying to stylize our characters, there still needs to be some version of that, even if it's very simplified throughout our characters, otherwise they aren't necessarily going to read as human. So my suggestion here for John was just to go back to some of these uh, basic anatomical shapes and 3D forms so that you can still have something underneath those, uh, those arcs and everything, still use those arcs, still use gesture, right? Um, because you still want some some liveliness to the work. And, and across his work, there's really a lot of that liveliness there. Um, it just needs to be shored up with the bone, right? Otherwise, you basically have skin and muscle sort of all loose on their own. Now here in the other direction, hopefully this is showing up fairly well. Uh, this is Mr. Devil Dice's work. Um, and this comes in from the other direction where there is a sense of construction here, right? There's very solid, uh, simple shapes in the sphere of the head and everything like that, um, but there is a lack of that gesture. And so gesture really is an important thing once you see it's if it's not there. Um, and so here, let me just pull up what I was able to do as a bit of a draw over for his, his bunny character here. Um, and I'll, there's a lot more writing here because this actually wasn't part of a, a video necessarily. But you'll notice that if you take those same basic shapes, but you still try to introduce uh, some curving, right? That, that bean shape to the body. Um, that The bean really is, is actually gonna help you to create uh, an arcing line a lot more. Um, you can see in the face here, this, there's a sort of central point that the appeal is building from. So I've talked before about how appeal um, is can be, in, in one respect, uh, the flow of different shapes uh, that's consistent across forms. So f in this version here, there's kind of a loose point that all things are drawing from. Um, and that just kind of you know, pulls a lot of the energy to that center nose point of this rabbit character. And, you know, things like the legs that naturally have that arc and S to them. Um, otherwise, you know, we don't necessarily have straight legs. And this is something that happens with um, 
nowadays people are starting to call it cuphead style even though it's been around a lot longer um, this rubber hose style of you know 20s and 30s animated characters a little bit of the adventure time uh, kind of style in there as well where these are very basic shapes um, but if you're only using uh, exactly round spheres and things like that um, exactly these straight angled uh, lines like that you are gonna lack some of the movement which is really a staple of a lot of those old cartoons and things like Cuphead now too so again trying to work gesture in the way that you can work on your gesture of course is through life drawing uh, studying images or going to life drawing classes and figuring out those natural arcs in the human anatomy um, and the motion that humans have um, that can always build into other simplified characters animal characters stylized characters it's really a helpful thing to build in continuing on with that idea of appeal um, connor here has some really nicely designed characters uh, this one especially has a, a lot of good balance to them they're really dynamic um, a lot of energy and personality um, there's just a couple of changes that i made in my drawovers here uh, really quickly where you'll notice first of all this again goes back to the idea of appeal uh, first of all just a quick mass to the the head here I feel like the thing that I say the most in some of these critiques is the mass of the head right um, there's just a, a little bit of extra room to get from the forehead there because the eyes are actually pretty far down the head you can actually see on my face here that it, it takes a while even if you know you don't count the hair which is kind of short now uh, it takes a while to get to the eyes right and so something that you'll notice with this character here there's some you know the the eyes kind of start pretty early on in the face and for this character to be sort of along the lines of like a heroic or or protagonist character um, there was a little bit of a lack of appeal that i felt here and uh here with this younger character so the the changes that i made just added again round a little bit more rounded features it's not like you always need to round these features right but for the idea and the the goal behind this character um, I felt like this this was helpful um, and the same here you'll notice that I uh, felt the character was a little bit too long in the torso right you, they can still be tall uh, through the legs like this kind of exaggerated but just to add a little bit of like a you kind of have this small medium large uh, set of proportions here uh, shortening the torso down to about this line which I did here and then just uh, really subtle in the in the eyes let's uh, toggle that just a, a movement of the eyes down the face uh, a little bit of a different nose because it it was reading a little bit too kind of ghoulish or you know lifeless um, and a couple of changes to the anatomy there on that arm um, to really just kind of take it the extra five percent because honestly these are really nice looking characters but that's something that you can do is again uh, the idea at the bottom of the eyes here this that's a line that's connecting together um, there's a lot of you don't have to follow that same idea with the rabbit of the single point but if there's some amount of rhyme and reason to all of these shapes it's going to be easier to read and that always lends itself to more appeal i wanted to talk a little bit about color value and color picking here we have some examples of ducks work and they have this very uh kind of simplified illustrative style that's really cute um, this character down here i think especially is, is really great um, but there's a few struggles here with color choice that i just want to point out this middle piece here this is a uh, the initial piece that they made um, and s some ideas about composition aside with uh, where the the eye is drawn in this piece what the focus is uh, clarity of those things if you were to actually again this is something i talk about a lot is the value right the this this light to dark uh, everything every color has a a value to it right if it's white grayscale black right um, if you convert this down if you just turn the saturation down on this image you'll notice that there's quite a bit um, that gets kind of muddled for example in our uh, torso here this is a blue against a brown but then as soon as you do this you'll see that they start to blend together and obviously yeah the hue difference does help differentiate those things but naturally to the eye what's gonna read better is a difference not just in hue but in value as well so there's a quick uh, little imperfect draw over that I did here where I moved the eye line down just a little bit so that you know you, you have less of a tangent with sort of the sink head characters 
faucet against the, the fence in the background there, but also drawing up the value of that background so that these characters pop a little bit more. Um, this The value of these arms I changed, a little bit more vibrancy to the, the yellow and, and some of these things here. And ultimately I think that, that brings it to something that you can still kind of read um, and there's some contrast in the image as well. This character that I mentioned here, again the values are, if you sort of turn on that saturation there, the character's arms and everything are, are just starting to blend a little bit into the, uh, excuse me, into the background here. And this is the difficulty with trying to create anything lineless like this is lines, like in this uh, bee balloon character on the left, they create a new idea every time you create a line. Um, but here, the relationship, especially when you do something like this with a big background and everything, every uh, color choice is important because of the way that they relate to each other. So for this example here, this is a very tiny change on this character, um, but I just lightened up the background, that circle, so that there's some contrast there, and then did a little bit of a hue shift toward a, the, the red, just a little bit warmer, right? The skin warms up a little bit, a little bit more of a literal rosy glow because you're dealing with blood, right? So the more red a person looks, the warmer they are, the more lifelike they look, and then the greener, bluer, right? We tend to associate with it being dead or lifeless or uh, Cree or whatever Yondu is. Here again with this character is just a nice contrast in the outfit and the torso area, but there's just a lot of colors that are a little too same up in the head region. So I'm not sure if these were ears or hair right on up here, but again, it's, it's hard to read what all of those things are on the face. So the red might be too much of a, it might be too bright with what I did, but you'll see I just kind of made a differentiation between those circles, even the ears, if they're a, uh, you know the same color as the skin, just being behind the head, making them a distinctly darker color, I think is helpful. Here are the colors that they used for this bee balloon character here. And I just did a little bit of a walkthrough where I did some color picking of what I would choose for this character. For example, um, let's see. So I would I started with a, a, a yellow here for the bee uh, that, would, that would go here. Um, and I just walked through how I would choose these colors. So all of them have a little bit of harmony to them. All of the darker shades, if you were gonna shade areas of this, are not just a darker, you know, down in value, but they're also a little bit more saturated and maybe hue shifted either, you know, to the red or to the blue a little bit more, um, just to add a little bit of, of character to them. And because, especially with, uh, these very simplified illustrative characters, the lighting, if it's gonna be pure dark or pure light, is gonna, it's gonna look flat. And finally here when it comes to color choice, again, is Eye of Merlin's uh, work, which I think is incredibly strong. It's all of the, the life is there, all of the, the strength of the draftsmanship is there when it comes to the sketching of the characters, uh, but their difficulty is, okay, how do I now color this and render it? And also how do I contextualize these otherwise sort of free-floating characters and expressions. So just on the color side of things, just to stay on theme, um, here's like one of their finished pieces here. And a change that I made was, again, a little bit of a hue shift toward that that red. Um, and then an, an overlay layer here of just this kind of pink color, right? Um, what that does, and I failed to mention on the previous, uh, that that bee balloon character is if you take some colors like that that aren't necessarily harmonious together, um, I'll do it in here in a second, and use an overlay layer like that, it actually helps draw all of those colors toward one central color, and that tends to harmonize them out. Of course, it's still something you wanna play with, it's not an instant cheat necessarily, but here is uh, something that I did for this character here. This is just a sketch that they provided. What I did was I took this otherwise, you know, black and white, there's, you know, actual white in the JPEG there and turned it into a multiply layer. And then just uh, from here, added this blue uh, flat shading, right? So just traced the inside of the, the sketch here and then went through that same color picking process, right? You can actually see how this blue is uh, behind all of the rest. That was the first color that I picked. 
So went from there, uh, chose a skin tone that kind of contrasted the blue, kept everything sort of light values as far as the base color is concerned, and then went out from there uh, choosing colors. And of course, as I mentioned here, here's a an overlay layer on top of these. So it's very subtle. Right now it's just at 30% here, but I could, here, let me get this nice and nice and big for you to see. Here it is without here those tones and colors. Always check these things on other screens too, if you can, uh, just don't, don't go completely off of the one brightness setting that you have on this, the monitor that you have. Um, here is the base and then here is, you know, 50%, 30%. There's a full hundred percent of what that color would look like. And of course you can hue shift around this overlay here. That's, that's something that can help with color choice. And if the, the da dangerous thing is that you don't want to color pick in a vacuum necessarily. Um, for the previous work with duck, I think it's, it's, best to go that route because everything is completely flat and you have that relationship between colors. Um, but with something like this, this at least starts out, you know, I, I added all of these things uh, to the character. Here's, there's the flat shading, right? But then from here you can do a lot with lighting and shadow. So here, this is just a blue multiply layer that goes over top of that. Very quick, it's not, you know, a comprehensive render or anything like that, but when you start out with a set of local colors like that, local colors being the actual color of the thing untouched by uh, light or any kind of environment stuff. Then go from there to, to lighting, I think you can get some interesting ideas and it's ultimately going to look more harmonious. So a huge thank you to the folks in this video, not only for uh, their patronage, which helps make these videos possible directly, but also for providing their work and allowing us to learn something from them. I think that no matter where someone is in their artistic growth, um, we saw a huge sort of span of where people are in their artwork. Uh, no matter how skilled someone is, that ability to continue to want to learn, uh, to be open to those critiques and help uh, that guides them in a, a further direction, I think is the most valuable quality that someone can have. I talked about cynicism in one of the highest viewed videos on the channel before, and people were misconstruing the idea of cynicism and criticism and thinking that I was talking about how criticism is bad, um, which I don't think is the case at all. I think if you can get uh, opinions that you can trust and that you're sort of in a, a good faith setting, right, where it's not like, roasting the work, but getting someone who can really, uh, has your best interests in mind uh, to look at it, I think is the one of the best ways to improve. And it's helped me a lot in the past. If you are interested in a critique of your own, you can go over to patreon.com slash bagel denizen. Uh, there's actually a lot of new things that I'm, I'm going to be adding to the Patreon very, very soon that I'm really excited about. So stay tuned to the Patreon. If you'd like to follow me elsewhere, it's at bagel denizen on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. Thank you so much for watching and have fun creating.